72 can connect. With us this week, we have Josh. Hello. And Josh. Adam. Josh. Hi. Josh. Hello. Josh is here. So, how's it going, fellas? Pretty it's good. Going. I just got, I just how's saw it? in chat, why is my camera flipped? Is my camera flipped? Is your camera flipped? I don't is know right if your hand. camera's flipped. Right hand. Those no, yeah, it's hand. totally flipped. Totally flipped. It's flipped. Yeah. yeah, you're flipped, man. Does that mean you can't see the brand name on this delicious bar of chocolate I've been eating? No, now we can actually read it. Oh, no, sick. We totally can't. Yeah. It's backwards. Totally backwards. Okay, now it's backwards. Wait, that's okay. Why, why does it look straight for me? Because you're looking oh. in a, you're not looking in the, the cast. Yeah, I saw it in the stream. Okay. Oh, that's okay. Unfortunate. <laughs> Well, that, hmm. too bad. You're just going to have to deal with backwards Adam today. Yeah, yeah. Adam is backwards. He's, a, he's the backwards man. Givers. I'm the backwards man. I can walk backwards faster than you can. Damn. Yes, it is totally gibberish, <laughs> souls. And that's what oh, okay. Adam enjoys to well, eat, oh, is yeah, gibberish. I'll, yes, I'll enlighten you then. I will read it to you. This is a bar, a wonderful, delicious bar of chocolate. This is Lint, the brand. Uh, I love L-I-N-D-T. Lint. L-I-N-D-T. Uh, let's see. Master Swiss Chocolatier since 1845. Dang. Uh, dang. Uh, touch of sea salt, dark chocolate. Very, very tasty. Um, yeah, I'd recommend it. I've um, had their uh, truffles. I love their truffles. Yeah, those little their, things are good. Their little truffles, if I have like a bag of those, it is gone. So I got to keep those away. <laughs> What's your favorite chocolate brands? Um... Or what, what scale are we talking here? Are we talking price, no right, issue? Let's 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 go. Yeah, price, no issue, and take us down the hierarchy. I I think Lint's probably about the best I've had. Um, okay. I'm not a big chocolate condensate kind of guy, but I really love Lint's. Okay. Uh, Trobler, uh, tro- tro- the you Swiss Triangle. It. I believe in you. Trobler bone. Trobler bone. Trobler bone. Tro- Trobler bone. No, I'm, I'm Trobler talking. Bone. <laughs> I'm talking uh, <laughs> that company. Oh I don't know what it is. I, I enjoy yeah, theirs. I'm just talking like, like straight chocolate. Oh, straight chocolate. Not like not like candy bars, like chocolate bar brands. Well, in that in that case, I mean, the only ones I really know is Lint. Um, I really like Dove. Or Dove chocolates are really nice. Yeah. Or or I guess you could go uh, whichever company, even if it's not just a chocolate bar, whichever company has the best chocolate in that bar. Yeah, I would say Lint, Dove, Rest of Mars, and then Hershey. Yeah. Would be my my go. I hate Hershey chocolate. Yes. I don't understand why anybody thinks it's awesome. That is the most overrated thing I've ever seen. Hershey chocolate is garbage. I like that uh, Dark Souls' favorite chocolate is dark chocolate. (laughs) <laughs> dark chocolate is amazing. I just think dark soul, dark chocolate. You're staying consistent with the theme. I'm in, I'm, I dark like chocolate, that. dark chocolate invader. Yeah, um, dark cho- actually, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> fun factoid about that. Um, that's actually a reason that there was a fear of a shortage in cocoa supplies. Um, because dark soul. Yes, because yeah, dark, dark soul. Soul's eating dark, it all? He eats <laughs> so much chocolate. No, um, because of the uh, popularity of dark chocolate in the last decade, um, it takes oh, a lot yeah. more chocolate to make dark chocolate. Because you're not watering it down. Because it's real chocolate. Yeah. (laughs) Because it's good. (laughs) So um, that's actually been causing a little bit of a shortage. That makes sense. All right. So here's here's my hierarchy. We got Lind at the top. Then you got uh, Ghirardelli. Oh, I forgot about them. And then you got Godiva under that. And then we're starting to get into more of the... The candy bar brands standard american bands yet yeah, brands um bands. dove chocolate i think dove chocolate i think it's the best of the eminem mars nestle crap stuff yes hands down and then you got the mars stuff then you got nestle and then hershey's is at the very bottom because hershey's chocolate sucks hershey's does one thing really well and that's her cookies and cream bar that's pretty good yeah and I reese's cups show. That, that I won't go there. Yeah, I, I don't think never, I have any strong opinions on chocolate. People are super yeah. passionate about chocolate. It's one of those weird things that, like, it's one of the like I guess cars maybe, or but that mm-hmm. makes sense in a way. I suppose I don't know. It's like a sports team to me. <laughs> okay, what what if we yeah. was to tell you if you was going to a grocery store and be told get one candy bar? Do you have a yeah, candy what's your, bar? What's your that go-to you would go candy to? bar? Oh shit! 
I don't know. I don't have a candy bar. I mean, is Reese's a candy bar? I'd probably just get a Reese's. Yeah, yeah that works. Yeah, that's a I'd that's pro- a solid I'd, choice. I'd probably just walk in, grab a Reese's, walk out. Uh, oh, underrated, underappreciated Reese's Fast Break. Those are pretty good. Yes, those are. Really I never good. hear. I never hear anybody talk or or mention those at all. But those are good. Good stuff. I think for me, watch them call it. Walk in, get me a watch them call it. God, I love those things. Oh, Butterfinger's awesome. I'm with Dark Soul on that. Butterfinger, oh. solid. Butterfinger. Yeah. Uh, Butterfinger or um, Reese's for sure, or Twix. And if I'm hanging out with buds, I do a lot of Snickers <laughs> too, though. Snickers is, I know we've talked about this, Eric. Snickers is not the best candy bar, but if you don't know what you want, that's like it's always a solid choice. Yes, <laughs> not super disappointed it's, with this. It's like a, grab. it's a, it's a default, it's a go to. Like, I don't know what I want, but I want a candy bar. I'll just grab a Snickers, and you're never disappointed. So I remember working with Adam. Uh, we would have some days when we didn't want to take a lunch. We just wanted to get out of there early and maybe actually get beat ups after work or something. So mm-hmm. we would grab a Coke, a Snickers, and I would also get a peanut butter Snickers. And that was lunch. <laughs> we were very healthy. Yes. Very healthy. <laughs> I don't do that so much anymore. But, but yeah, um, I wasn't here last week. Um, oh, yeah, to, you weren't here, though. Listened a little bit to you guys last week. And uh, Left Twix sucks, by the way, Prototix. Tricks. Um, Left so, yeah, that was really interesting, actually, be on the outside listening. This is one of the few times where I was able to listen to the podcast. God, well, you don't go back and listen to every single episode and then analyze our uh, uh, pros and cons and then tweak your skills to improve the podcast every single week, Eric? I was there for a while. No, I don't. I don't you weren't even in the full cast. <laughs> That's legendary. I don't do that either. No. Me neither. I, I, I used to, but it was just interesting. Yeah, and I can realize. I, want, I, I actually do like listening to it. Like anytime I'm not for there for a cast, I do like going back to listen to it. Yeah. I, I, usually, I usually at least watch, listen to, uh, I, I need to know. Yeah, I was actually here. I just wasn't on the cast. I was able to chill. Most of the time when I'm not on the cast, I'm flying cross country or I'm out in the middle of the wilderness trying not to die. Uh, a little little different change of pace. Does that happen a lot? The trying not to die every day. Yeah. Well, I mean, mean, yeah. I I do my best every day to try not to die. I will say, though, it's pretty easy to not die these days. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. We're we're in the golden age of not dying, as far as we you are. know society goes. Yeah. Speaking of dying, I'm sure you've been doing a lot of that recently, Eric. Um, How's dying been going? <laughs> actually, not bad. Um, really, I'm actually impressed with myself on um, Monster Hunter. I'm not dying much at all. Not dying much at all, really. I I'm actually um, super conservative. So okay. if I get so you're just, you're just spending a lot of time. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll say it that way. Um, okay, I definitely um, my uh, palico has some healing abilities, so I definitely whenever I get into a tight bind, I'm bound to run. Um, nice. I will say this Monster Hunter game is fucking good. For those of you that live under a rock, uh, Monster Hunter World. Just yes. released fairly recently, not just released yesterday, but you know, uh, relative, <laughs> relatively recently. Yeah. Um, two and two I, weeks ago. Yep, that's actually recently. Let's just go with that. Recently, <laughs> and our boy, <laughs> our boy Eric has been all up on. I think a few people in the community yeah. have been uh, been uh, getting on that grind. But I, however, am waiting for the PC release because I am uh, an elitist. I think is the uh, term. <laughs> I wondered why. You and uh, I think Bivens was talking about that game a lot. I wondered why you guys weren't getting it, and I didn't think about the delayed PC release. Yeah, I mean, I definitely would be all over it. We're both super hyped about it, but at the same time, I don't think he has a PlayStation. I have a PlayStation, but if I'm not playing with friends, I'm just not going to play. Like I don't like right now. I just don't. I don't play anything unless I'm playing with friends. There's very, very few games I play with friends. How did uh? How's your how's your grind going? <laughs> Um, really well, uh, really, really, really well. Um, I got through what I think might, might be the story. I mean, there's still some story driven components to it, but I think I might be Mm -hmm. done with the story, but then again, in monster hunter, the story doesn't matter. (laughs) 
Right. Are you fighting unicorns now? That's how you know that you've finished the story. No, I haven't gotten to the uh, complete end game, guys. Um, I've seen them. I'm just not ready. Not oh, ready cool. at all. Um, That's great. I did get one epic death where um, I didn't even realize he was there. I'm almost, I almost finished off the hunt I'm on. It was... Uh, it was uh, Fuck, the T-Rex dude. I just blanked on his name. But anyway. Raphaelis? Uh, no, not him. Um, but uh, uh, Ange. Angeneth. I almost Me. have him dead. I'm like, fuck yes, fuck yes, fuck yes. All of a sudden, I just, boom. What the fuck? I turn around. <laughs> this big-ass black thing, I don't even know the name of because it's new for me, just comes in and one-shots me. Wrecks my shit. And then continues to wreck the shit of the Angeneth I was hunting. <laughs> No, <laughs> um, it's really, really fucking cool. They um, stepped up the interaction between monsters. Um, I've had a, cool. I've had a lot of instances where I'm almost out of potions. I would run something to a Rathalos and hide, and watch the Rathalos just fuck his shit up. <laughs> like he'll just pick him up, throw him on the ground, toast him with fire. It's awesome. Is there <laughs> how many hours you said you were in? You were in fifty hours. About I think fifty that's hours deep. Bit. Yeah. So do they have any like? bigger than life uh monsters in this one i mean in the previous ones there was uh, um you know there was some that like fit on the screen some that like kind of fit on the screen but there was one that like their foot would fit on the screen is that <laughs> the kind of thing you're dealing with in in this one every once in a while i can say this because it's not spoilery because it's literally the first thing you're moving um mm -hmm. there's one that you fight on Oh, that's cool. Okay, so they did do that. Oh, that's, okay. that's fantastic. Yeah. I was going to ask, is this like Shadow of the Colossus uh, size monsters? or oh. No, no, not not the majority I, of them. No, no, well, no. Well, I no. mean, I just meant the one when you brought oh. up. Yeah, stuff. yeah, there, there is a gigantuan one. Other than that, though, they're okay. all, think of uh, Allosaurus T-Rex scale. Okay. Mm. And that's about as big as I've found. Nice. Um, that's still cool. Yeah, this is so how how uh, how grindy is it? Oh, it's grindy. It's, uh, it's grindy. Very grindy. Yeah. So um, every every monster you fight has its own element, pretty much going up. Um, and each one has like seven or eight drops that they drop. They don't drop them all every time, obviously. Mm -hmm. So you to make their armor for each one, you'll need like four of this for a helmet with this and this, and then five of this, three of this, and two of this for the gloves two of this one of this and this weird ass hide from this monster for the feet mm -hmm. so and that's just for one monster so, there is so like you are so you will be fighting the same monster most multiple times yes um okay. and the nice thing is the way the zones are i mean there's a lot of stuff that yes it'll feel the same you'll get used to areas and know how to do things in certain areas but the way they interact there's always nice little moments where it's oh fuck i didn't expect that to happen hmm. which is which is nice um, the online component's really cool. They have something they're calling SOS flares. Whereas if I go into a mission and I don't have anyone I'm playing with, if I'm about to go against something really rough and I just want help, I fire off this SOS flare and people can randomly jump into my game. Up to oh, four cool. people up to having four people in a match can just jump in and just go ham on it. That's a um, great feature. And um, Souls asked cool. in the chat, yes, it is a good grind. It's very satisfying to me because I like the progression. You do progress. You know exactly what you're grinding that guy for. If you don't get it, you back right out. You get right back in. You do it again. And okay. once, most of the time when you're doing the grind, you're hopefully to a point where you're able to take this monster down within 15 or less minutes. So it's not something you're spending 50 minutes on like you will your first time beating some of these. Some of these fights. Oh, okay, so some of the fights. That's that was going to be another one of my questions: is how how long are these monster fights generally? Yeah, is um, it like, or do they just have gigantic health bars and you're constantly just whittling away a little bit at a time for a long period of time? There's no health bars for them. Okay, it's okay. all visual clues. Like you'll um, break parts off of them after you damage it so much. They'll get scars. They'll start limping. They'll be missing limbs. It's really visual on it. Um, okay. The first time you fight stuff, I would say it's probably 25, 30 minute would be a good estimate. Like whenever I'm responding to SOS flares, I can jump into a, a match with someone that's been in there for 20 minutes and still probably fight with them for 10 more minutes until we beat it. 
That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, wow. the, these games were like in the past. Again, I haven't I've been out of it for a little bit, but they were super long before. Like there was some where you would play for like an hour just to get to the first like section of of that fight and then you'd have to leave and come back and play for another hour to win that fight. Damn. Yeah, like, on some of these high crazy. level ones it's going to be like that. Like my Rathalos fight um, we took one all the way to the timer and lost. We couldn't get it in the 50 minute timer. Yeah, it's pretty Ooh. it's pretty brutal. I like the idea of uh of like being able to play with friends. When when we played the other one, especially online, when we played the other one it was only land based. So like you you can like the only way we were able to play was uh just like if we were sitting next to uh, next to each other. Uh, so it's it's really nice to be able to play with friends over over the internet. Like, yeah, because like you're meeting people and that's great. But before, like we had to count on our friends being there. We had to count on our friends all like <laughs> meeting up at the bus stop at the same time or uh, being on. Uh, we did it on the, a bus ride to school. We did it on uh, on our lunch breaks. We did it when like we came over. We had to like set up the time. Um, and it was, uh, it was good, but like, it, it wasn't like, like a lot of multiplayer games today, you know, there's, uh, there's some good ones. I mean, are you playing, are, are you, uh, enjoying the multiplayer? You have m more friends that are playing with you or what's I've got a, is? I've got a couple people on my, on the Xbox that I play with. Um, but a lot of times what I'll do for the multiplayer, hey, if I'm trying to get something through something on the story, I don't have anyone helping me, I'll fire an SOS player up immediately because people mm -hmm. normally don't jump in until you're about the 15, 20 minute mark because they want to get in, help you finish it off and get the goods, mm -hmm. which is exactly what I'll do. A lot of times on SOS, <laughs> let's say I'm grinding something. It's going to take me 20 minutes to fight. Fuck that. I don't want to do that by myself right now. I just need one piece. I'm going to go to this board, say, hey, I want to respond to an SOS for this kind of monster. And what it'll do is show me all the hunts currently going on for this monster where people are asking for help. And I just choose one, jump in, help them get out. Yeah, that's great. Because like multiplayer is a big aspect of these kind of games. Like I really like that. This one was like, again, it's like really cool that that there's uh there's an actual multiplayer function that's that's not like you like the couch co-op equivalent of what we were doing um like i like that I, I can't wait to have that sort of interaction like with all with all of our friends we used to play with people that we used to play with uh like especially people we used to play monster hunter with exclusively um it's just so nice to be able to play those that kind of game uh we, i've been actually getting back into that uh that uh the doomsday heist in gta recently and it has that sort of experience where it's just like it's just a good time uh as a group as, as a group of friends i before on the last cast i was talking about the doomsday heist in gta and i was like oh you know it was really lame because i was super pissed because like i thought it was only one heist because i ended up burning through it and it doesn't it doesn't tell you that there's going to be more it doesn't mm -hmm. tell you that there's going to be like uh, any sort of lead up to anything after the final heist. And it was so short, I was super pissed. But there's three acts. <laughs> there's three. three acts to it. So we ended up doing the first heist. And just like before, so um, in all the other ones, there was like a set, uh, like a kind of little mini story arc for each heist. Like, hey, break this guy out of jail. Hey, go steal this thing. Or hey, go uh, rob a bank. Like it was all very like, simple arcs and this one it seems to be a full like story arc that stretches between three separate acts which is really 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 cool so once i got over that it makes it a lot more fun um how long is each act each act is is pretty time consuming we can't do a full section of it in one night um i mean the first act we took three days to do um last night uh we finished or what is it last night was that last night that was last night with uh dark soul um rs uh bubbles and me we were able to do the last um the last heist and then the last uh, you know the finale of that heist and then all of the online setup portions for the following heist which is cool 
because now we get to do all the fun stuff. So I still stand by the fact that I think that the that the online portion of it sucks, but mm-hmm. the later portions of it are really good. Like we were like flying, uh, we were like in flying cars and like landing on planes and all sorts of good stuff. So definitely, you guys, look forward to that. We're going to be streaming that uh, for sure. I think we've streamed all of that heist so far. Um, but yeah, the multiplayer aspect of it is freaking fantastic. Did you make back the money it cost for the heist? No. And I don't know if I will because it is a shitload of money. I made like what it costs. I think it costs about four million five like five million to actually do four or five million to actually do if you include like the ceo setup portion of it too mm-hmm. um so from there i have to make about five million i only made three hundred and eighty thousand on this heist oh. the whole thing yeah. and that's not including <laughs> the ten thousand it cost to set it up like or fifty thousand it cost to set up the initial heist so mm. i'm still down so i made made three hundred thousand Oof. on that last so we'll see if the other so ones are quite worth, but... yeah if the other ones are worth like 10 million a pop maybe it'd be worth it but i don't know we'll see <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll have to try one of those heists with you guys at, at some point they're really good we're all ready for those setups too like like it was uh it's definitely a good time once you uh buy a heist and start playing it can you go back to it at any time yes you can play it over and over and over again okay. like and there's also a really cool mission that I, I think we'll, we'll try. Um, that one you actually get, I think you get something like $10 million for for completing. And that is you go through all of the base heists without dying from oh. the first to the last with the same group of people without dying. And So don't play with would, RS. <laughs> <laughs> maybe? I don't know. I think RS could do it. I think we could do it. I know Dark Soul can do it. He's nuts. Just get RS to take cover. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. He, has to use <laughs> he doesn't need cover at all. <laughs> uh, check out the Twitch clip of that. That was funny. Oh, that man. was great. There, there's a clip of RS uh, at his best at GTA. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So kind of circling back a little bit to, to Monster Hunter, I do have a couple of questions. Um, yeah. And I hate doing this because I don't have any Monster Hunter experience. And I know they're not even really that similar of games at all but my only point of reference is shadow of the colossus which i'm a huge fan of and i know the only <laughs> thing they really have in, in common is that you're fighting monsters in third person but uh one of my favorite things about shadow of the colossus is uh, first off the the sense of epicness this giant uh majestic creature you're trying to fight and it's just the music's going and it's towering over you and you're climbing it and fighting it um question first part of the question is does monster hunter give you that feeling at all and my second part of that question is is there any puzzle aspect to it because in shadow of the colossus one of my favorite things is and a big part of the game is uh you encounter the colossi and you have to kind of figure it out you figure out how you're supposed to attack it because there's you know, it's not yeah, no. flashes leg a thousand times <sighs> right it's not something yeah monster hunter's never been like that if you had to equate okay. it to something i would consider it closer to like a dark souls where you actually have to you have to deal with it you have to fight with it and it sucks to actually use that because that's used for everything but mm-hmm. like this was this was i i equate uh, dark souls to monster hunter it really because um, like okay that's what i always assumed it was like there is an aspect of thinking before you act, um, especially in this one. They added a lot more in the environment. There's mm-hmm. environmental traps. There's environmental things you can use to your advantage. Like I've been farming anginiths. Uh, There's these things called paratodes. If you kick them, they explode with the gas that paralyzes anything that runs through it. You get like, you mm-hmm. kick it and you get like two seconds. And then the gas comes up and it stays there for about four or five seconds. So what I do, it, whenever an Anjanath runs to a section I know those are at, I will shoot him with my little uh, slinger, uh, just piss him off. He'll start charging at me. I'll kick one of these toads, I'll dodge him, and then he'll get paralyzed from the toad. So there's environmental okay. tricks and stuff you can do. Also, like there's little netting things that these uh, Palico people set up. And if mm-hmm. they walk under them, you can shoot them to trigger them to make them collapse on the monsters. 
So it sounds more like uh, similarly to Horizon Zero Dawn, where you have multiple ways that you can use interacting systems to take down the boss rather than how do I find this one thing I have to do that actually hurts the boss to beat it? Yes. Uh, in okay. a way, yes. Um, I found the more I've gotten used to using the environment, the environment really helps. <laughs> really, okay. really helps. You know, so it's much more combat focused than. You know, yes. You okay. know what you might like, Adam, and I, I think you should give it a shot. It might be a little mm -hmm. bit outside of what you normally play, but mm -hmm. uh, Dragon's Dogma. I don't know if you've ever played that or heard of it. I the only reason I've heard the name is I know that you've uh, you've mentioned it before in the past, but I don't I don't think you really described the game so, like, so much as it was so, just some kind of rele relevant uh, topic we were talking about and you brought right. it up. Right. Dra Dragon's ways. Dogma has some cool stuff to it. Like um, it has that little hacky slash you beat them up depending on the class you pick. You build up your mm -hmm. class and then you have your little party and you do your thing. Mm -hmm. But um, some of the cooler things you can do is it actually has a grip system a lot like Shadow of the Colossus. Like you can actually oh. jump onto mm -hmm. some of the monsters and climb onto them and then fight them while like you can you can be running up to something and grab onto like a griffin mm -hmm. and like it'll just fly away with you and you're like they're like fighting it on top of itself nice. <laughs> right there's like little pieces of it that you can chop off um like it's a it's a really good game and i actually think you might enjoy it it's a little closer to like a hack and slashy game you might not uh give it a second glance if you just take it at face value but i think you might really enjoy it okay is that a pc game yep it was uh, dragon age dark arisen is on steam and i let me see if i can find the uh price for you but it's dragon age yeah have you ever played any dragon age adam no no or, i actually haven't <laughs> or it's uh, a dra dragon's dogma sorry oh i was gonna say Dragon Age gets sorry. I was, Dragon, I was typing in the wrong thing. I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, you, you said that and you suggested no, to Adam. I was actually going to say Adam would probably enjoy the Dragon he, Age games. I don't know I if he'd like the Dragon know. Age as much I'm, as he would Dragon's <sighs> Dogma. Dragon's Dogma is more of a hack Dragon, and slashy, yeah. like first person, not first person, but you know, third person hack and slash game. And it actually looks like if you look at the screenshots, I don't think you'd buy it. I'm like a thousand times, I don't think you'd buy it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I Fair think enough. you'd actually enjoy it. Well, I say the Dragon Age because that reminds me a lot of like uh, some of the old school Dark Alliance, Champs and Norath kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I mean that's that's yeah. I don't. I and I know Adam loves Adam playing that. Adam Did loved he... Champs and Norath. I remember. I yeah, I like Champions and Norath a lot. Oh really? What then? Why didn't she jump on Divinity with everybody? Uh, it's different. That's more of a. That's like Boulder's Gate versus Dark Alliance kind of thing. Oh, you're yeah. saying? Oh, okay. So you're saying this is this is more. I like that. I like the hack and slash looting thing. Dungeon crawler. Okay, yeah. well then, then Dragon Age is nothing like that, especially I, Dragon Age on PC. Dragon Age Origin, I always kind of correlated to more of a Diablo style. Did you play? Oh, here's the question. Here's the magic question. Did you play yeah. it on PC or did you play it on console? Console. That's the problem. That's fantastic. Oh my god, it's so funny. That's so hilarious. Okay, because that's what they did on purpose. So what they did for Dragon Age, uh, Dragon Age Origins on PC versus Dragon Age Origins on console, they actually did them t completely differently. So Dragon Age on console is more like a Boulder's Gate like uh, experience, and they made the uh, Dragon Age on console more of like a like a single person walkthrough. So like. Your bots did their own thing. You can still switch to them, but you know you uh, could play through the whole thing just as yourself. And they actually lowered the difficulty level and lowered the strategic difficulty level, like both ends, right? Because they're kind of different. Um, specifically for that uh, for consoles. So if you were to play it again on PC, your experience would be totally different. Hmm. It's actually amazing, and and you huh. should really. And this is like. This is a good example of that. Probably one of the biggest examples of consoles kind of getting a dumbed down difficulty. Now, that's not like necessarily like an elitist kind of concept. It's just, <laughs> it, it, it's really just because of accessibility. So, mm -hmm. um, like the PC crowd that jumps into a game like Dragon Age is going to expect something, you know, a lot grittier, a lot, a lot harder to get through. Uh, mm -hmm. But, but uh, as far as console games are concerned, they, they need to be a little bit more accessible because it's a bigger market a lot of times. 
and especially playing with a controller, playing like a top down sort of strategic, uh, uh, more of a Boulder, Boulder's Gatey kind of game is a lot harder than it is to play on a uh, PC, right? Yeah. Hmm. So, Dark Souls uh, Dark Soul saying that Dragon Age is more turn based strategy ish. Is that correct? It, it is. That's but what on he's console, suggest- it's not. Yeah, that's the part that. that that's the part where I start to lose interest. Yeah, right. well, that's that's why I was suggesting it based off of on console. Guy. It's more of a dungeon crawly hack and slash. Right, feel. Yeah. because on console, they actually like most people that play through console will probably tell you that they never paused. Mm-hmm. Yeah. OK, so that's actually super cool. And it's a, it's a totally uh, that's a totally interesting concept that I actually never thought we'd ever run into on this. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> it makes me want to. I'm not. I'm not going to play it, but it makes me want to look up some videos on that and kind of see the see the differences firsthand. Right. Yeah, it's a massive. Yeah, it's a huge difference. And there's a bunch of videos of the developers talking about it. There's a bunch of um, like let's plays. There's a bunch. There's actually a really cool thing that I think IGN or somebody they did a review and they separated them. They said these these are so different that we're going to review them differently. Dragon Age Origins huh. on PC got like a nine point something. And then Dragon Age on console got like an eight or something like that. Yeah, and that, that's a lot that's different cool. than what you normally see with PC console where it's like, okay, Overwatch has aim assist on console. That's typically what you're used to seeing in the parallels, not, right. hey, yeah. this is essentially a different game with the same right. kind of wrapper. Exactly. Yeah. It's still the same game. Like it's still, you still play through the same story. You still do the same fights. You still go through the same experiences, but you're, you're zoomed in a little closer. Your buttons are all configured to your, you know, to a, a easy to understand mapping. Um, the difficulties toned way down, like way, way down. Um, so it's more of a, you don't have to worry about the positioning of all of your guys before entering a room. Like I remember going in Dragon Age on PC you had to like set up all your guys before even entering the room. So it's, it's fantastic. But it's, yeah, that's, that's also really funny. Cause we've been having a lot of debate recently about console versus PC. Cause I was one of the guys saying, fuck it. I'm not waiting eight months. I'm buying monster hunter now. <laughs> yeah. Right. But then you have a port. You're like the difference between a port yeah. and, uh, uh, like a lot of times PC just gets a port. Yeah. But Dragon Age Origins was like, uh, okay, we need to understand both perspectives, and they and they did it totally differently. I still think that if anybody is like has played the console version, go back, buy the PC version, buy it at full price. Doesn't even matter. Hmm. Buy it, play it. It's a totally different experience. I would. That's awesome. But the next game like that I buy will be Divinity 2. <laughs> Yeah. I suppose so, but there is different there, like okay, so I'm playing through Divinity 2 a little bit here and there, but there is a huge difference in how like Dragon Age looks and feels versus Divinity and how that plays. And the little like fatalities that you get on some of the monsters, the the character to character interaction is crazy deep. Um it just felt better in in Origins so far than uh partly I also am not using on on uh, Divinity. I'm not using like single player playthrough kind of stuff. I'm sure there would be like little interactions if I had uh, if I just played through by myself. But I'm playing with friends, so it's a little bit more D and D like, right? Yeah. Um, but Dragon Age, like people just strike up conversations and go into like a full fledged talk back and forth. So if you had one person that's like a uh from like an elf and the other one that's like a like a human noble they just start talking to each other may they be belittling each other but trying to understand who they are together and if you if you mix and match those conversations those those characters um right you get some amazing story like background stories from it and it and you get really cool detailed information about who the characters are and it gets super super deep and you get really in- emotionally invested in these characters because of that reason it's amazing yeah that um makes i was always wondering a little everything i watched on divinity it may have been because i've always been watching people pop in pop out but it doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of story to divinity whereas a lot of games traditionally of that nature i'm used to having actually a really deep story really deep well story. that's actually i think my problem with mario and and I'm playing through Mario, and I'm I've gotten all the stars or whatever, and I, not all of them, you know, but I've done the fir- the first the first uh, section of it, right, which is winning the like saving her from Bowser, right? Yeah, that's 
right? So uh, you guys all know I'm not spoiling shit. It's a Mario game. We're gonna save Peach from Bowser. So, <laughs> so. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, I know. Oh no my way. god. But then after that, like she just kind of does her thing, and it's not like a horrible like oh she's in the clutches of another thing. She's just like kind of wandering around, and then you just sort of wander around. And there's no there's nothing like locking me down to the situations that i'm doing like we're semi chasing bowser to save her right but none of it feels like grounded like with dragon age everything's watertight from the beginning like you have your origin story and then you have a purpose based on that origin story and then your purpose is pushing you forward through the rest of the story right and then you hit this like ending which i think is lackluster because it leaves like a lot of a lot of strings dangling for sure Mm -hmm. but the, be- the 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 best thing about it is that everything interacts with each other all the way through to the end. I'm sure, like, but you know, Mario's not supposed to though. Mario's never been a big narrative game. It's always been save Peach and then explore after. Right, and I I love it. Like, it's fine and jumping and exploring and doing all the stuff. Like, I'm having a great time. I keep going back to it. I keep playing it. I'm still playing it. It's good. There's really cool stuff going on. But, like, I think it's just more, like, I need to take that whole story aspect of it out of my head and just play it like a Mario Maker level. Like, they're all a bunch of Mario Maker levels, and you're just going through them all, and you're just trying to see if you can make it to the end. You're trying to see if you can do whatever it takes to track down the stars and do, you know, to fill your balloon or whatever the hell you're doing. (laughs) You got to get that moon power for the balloon. If you try try to get invested in a Mario story, you're going to have a bad time. It's just, yeah, I mean, it's not made for that. It's really just not made for that. I I agree. I, I understand for sure. Like I get it. It's just like you trying to master the mechanics of the game and, and just, it's not really necessarily a collectathon as much as it is just like, you trying to well, I guess it is a collectathon, just a really nice one. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say there's thousand moons you can total. Yeah, it's I mean it's fun. I'm having a good time. I guess it's it's like I like I like the whole escapist mentality when I go into like a solo player game. But there's like I feel like I should be like showing off my skills on Mario, like, oh look at the cool little hat tricks I can do. <laughs> I don't know. Stream it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know how. So I wanna see those hat tricks. I'll, I'll I'll play like this, and I'll just kind of like through my because I don't have a capture card. So. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's that game. Webcam I'm... on the screen stream. Oh God, fuck let's do no! It. Yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna I'll, get a I'll... GoPro and attach it to my head and play from my couch. I'll yeah, I can just my... duct tape this webcam. Just pull it over, stick it right here. <laughs> that would make me nauseous. Low yeah, quality really... streamers. Yeah, I'll just like you know wipe my <laughs> once in a while. Get some sweat drip down gonna, on the I'm webcam. I'm not gonna play the game on Twitch. I'm gonna play the game and then just kind of relay the information via voice. Yeah, we'll see uh, you back I'm, there on your couch, just chilling. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> there, there's okay. So okay, I get it. Like Mario's amazing. It's not there for the story. I like it. I still like it. I'm playing it more than Zelda, and I keep picking up Zelda and turning it off and going back to Mario. So like, there's got to be something to that, wow, right? That's it's surprising. a great, yeah. I thought I'd just totally be invested, but I just like I keep getting lost on Zelda, and then I'm like trying to comb like the wilderness, and like I just keep turning off and going back to Mario. At least I know like I have a rough idea of what I'm about to do in Mario. Like with Zelda, I'm like, what am I doing? All right, yeah. and I just go away. Like I got a torch, I did a puzzle, great. Tom keeps <laughs> talking about how much he's going back to Zelda. To me, it's a game as it was great. I enjoyed the fuck out of playing it, but I don't feel like I need to go back and find more shrines or seeds or anything it's like eh, i've had fun with it i'm done yeah well i mean i there's a, i mean yeah i i think once i get through a certain portion of it and i have a better foundation about what's actually happening in the world because i don't really know what's going on i don't know who i'm helping i get it there's a boss and i'm supposed to get there great i just got to get buff and you know go mess them up and that's that's fantastic i don't know i guess like again it comes back to the same thing i need a little bit of a story but one thing that's amazing is it's I've not... been playing a game with great story, and uh, it's oh. it's another Uncharted. And I don't know if you guys have played Uncharted. Have you guys played yeah. many of the Uncharted? No. I'm not a whole nope. lot, but I played them. Okay, so Lost Legacy is cool because it's the first one that doesn't focus around Nathan Drake. Yeah, it's a, around like two other characters that were kind of like side characters, but they're both female, which is actually also kind of cool. So you get like a oh, okay, you know. 
Tomb Raider y feel. But the cool thing is, is Naughty Dog really knows how to bring characters to life. Um, especially, especially when they're like 30 to 40 year old males with <laughs> brown hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> And this one is cool. Like they, they, they really they took this this character that had like very small pieces of it, and they really brought her, uh, just brought her up, and she's like this really interesting dynamic character. Um, in this one, and she's like a little bit more goofy. She has like a backstory, and it's and it's really coming along nicely. I like it. But like the other character, who's like this military esque person, feels like a little bit more dry and maybe she's just like being reserved because of like her background she's really on the straight and narrow like the whole time you know she's very like we just need to get back to work you know we need to get back to what we're doing and stop having fun right and the other character's like you're happy and you know what that's a sin (laughs) 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 that's exactly it and the other character is very whimsical she's like oh what's that let's go over there check this out let's do this thing and and you feel more like that character, right? Because you're just exploring this world that Naughty Dog's created for you. Um, and especially because there's like a certain area where it really opens up for you temporarily because most of Uncharted are very linear. But this one in particular opens up quite a bit and you get to explore. And you can see the other character who's more on the straight and narrow kind of like getting a little frustrated with you. Like, let's let's kind of, let's, let's go. Like, there's nothing, we're not really doing anything here and the more side questy portions that you do the more she becomes a little bit more agitated but it also starts bringing out more of who she is so i really hope that develops as time goes on dark soul has a very interesting compelling question in chat do you get to murder hordes of henchmen in this uncharted you always do it's that okay. yes you do of course <laughs> you do the one thing I liked in the other ones, though, is some of the other ones you were like you were also fighting like an ancient civilization. So every once in a while, someone would like there'd be like a weird thing there that you'd have to deal with that wasn't human or maybe wasn't like a uh, that wasn't like a part of the evil henchmen that happened to get there every single time, even yeah. though that you've unlocked the code to get to this room. <laughs> so you stumble into this area with these native creatures and because they're trying to defend their home, you murder all of them like an asshole. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's how it goes down. But like, it's, it's a, it's like kind of the cliche of these sort of, uh, these sort of games where, you know, you're like sitting there and you, you get through these like crazy, like, intricate puzzles where where you do all this shit and then like you get in this room it's an ancient tomb and then all of a sudden everyone's there to kill you and you're like like, (laughs) dude did you see this shit i had to do how did you get your tank in here like i don't understand what's happening just drop it in from the ceiling dog you got to get a helicopter it's it's indiana joan meets rambo that's exactly what happens and it's like I I like the like the ancient races and stuff. And this one they have a better like so far they have a better reason because they're actually ahead of you in this one instead of you being like the one pushing through and solving all the weird issues, the weird things. Oh, that's good. Like they're actually ahead of you in the process. And I like that. I like that they're but you know, that's obviously going to fall apart and I'm going to have to be opening a tomb where they're all going to be in, even though no one's ever opened it or solved this puzzle. Before. We've been here for 10,000 years. <laughs> they're very, very, Those they're aren't like, the same people that entered to begin with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man, how old are those people? They've been in there that long. Oh, they've been, oh, they've been cycling through the generations. <laughs> I won't touch that. Yeah, one. but so far it's quite good. So I'm, 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 I'm really liking it. I'll, I'll let you know how it, how it ends up. I'm weird. This. I'm weird about those games. Um, Me I, too. I feel that they can be fun, but I never go out of my way and purchase one unless there's some story or something in it that is like huge. Like none of the Uncharted's ever grabbed me, but then really? The Last of Us did. Well, I, I can see that. I the Last Mainly of Us is more personal. I mean, story. even mm-hmm. Un- Uncharted does get pretty personal if you let it. Like, it's it has this, like, really... It's supposed to be Indiana Jones. It knows that it's cliche. It knows it's running into those Tomb Raider yeah. situations, you know? It's totally aware of that. But, like, there is a little story. You have to think about it more as, a, as like, a cheesy movie than an actual, like, yeah. you know, capture of life. That. Like Like, Last of Us feels like 
this could happen. Like, not obviously the zombies and all this crazy shit, right? <laughs> but like, this could happen to these people, and these people are experiencing this world, and they're they're interacting with each other like you would expect them to interact. You know, um, but I feel like in uh, I feel like in Uncharted, it's more of a movie. You have these characters that, that like, you know, that are are going through this like very movie like thing, but they have relationships with it built within it and those relationships are really good and they and they span all of the games and the last of them or the last one of them uh i was trying to avoid saying last of uh, <laughs> the last <laughs> of us. so the last of them like the four the fourth one uh really ties it all together and gives you a really good bookend to like nathan drake's story it goes through all of these things and these people that he meets and interacts with and you get to the final one and it kind of ties all this like story that you've been kind of building up these little tiny fragments of story of who Nathan Drake is like who is this guy and why does he exist and that's really more what you're going through on an uncharted like gotcha. why do we care about this man and why do we care that he succeeds and the first one second one third one it it kind of kind of get that idea but then the fourth one really ties it together you see him as a married man and you see him interact with his wife in a way a married man would interact with his wife. And there's no like crazy cartoony romantic like thing like, oh, I saved you from a burning building. So obviously I still love you. It's like they they handle it quietly. They handle mm -hmm. it through gestures and understanding. And like they're both pissed at each other for a certain situation, but they handle it and they just move through it and they continue to be. Like, he fucks up big like a guy does, right? <laughs> and they just sort it out, and it's beautiful. And I wouldn't, I, w I couldn't have written it better. I love that. I like when games don't necessarily get so gamey, but it goes back to something I've said before and got killed on. To me, a story is great, but it's always extra. Like, I, if I have a game that I enjoy to play that has no story at all, I am content. And I think that's where yeah. it's just the gameplay of Uncharted has always been kind of a run and gun. Let's how do you shoot your way out of this issue? Get to the next. Okay, let's solve this puzzle. How do we shoot our way out of this issue? Where to well, me, the last of us was more of a sneak around. How can you the last creatively of us had a lot of, do this? The had Uncharted, had a lot of is, the, Uncharted is the same itself. way. This Uncharted is the exact same way. You can sneak through the entire game. You don't ever have to running gun through everything you can sneak through everything and that's how i play it i actually never get into big file firefights and if i accidentally spook someone i'll run out and then i'll just get killed and i'll try to sneak the rest of it because the sneaking aspect of that game is fantastic there's a whole bunch of different like silent weapons you can use there's a whole another way to play the game there's multiple ways to play through an uncharted game and they allow you to do that it's very good there is those those epic like I'm jumping from car to car scenes. There's scenes right. where you're shooting someone while being dragged out of the back of a back of a, bucky, a buggy. But those are like amazing cinematic experiences that are just sort of like movies, like Fast and the Furious, right? You just get your adrenaline pumping. But right. but the few that I've played so far of Uncharted, I've gotten to scenarios where you are put in this area where you have to take out waves of people. Then you get to this castle yeah. where you have to take out certain guards on your way to get through. Yeah, which one's that? I don't remember what it was. I remember there was a speed challenge I had to do for Gina for the one with the castle. But the waves, I remember it was ruins where I had mm -hmm. to kill off everyone in these ruins, hunker down, and defend the next wave that came into the ruins. That sounds like the first area of the first game. That part probably was. <laughs> that yeah. sounds like that sounds like you're in the plane crash situation, you get out of that plane crash situation, and they teach you how to shoot the gun, and then you're there. After that, it's not like that. Well, because I remember, I think it was the second one going, it wasn't a villa, but you're jumping around rooftop to rooftop, taking people out, getting RPGs and shooting some big armored vehicle that's driving through the center of town. Yeah, you just, just, I mean, I would say. I mean, it's just whole, like you, the experiences I've had in, with it. Out, like if you're just jumping in, jumping out of an Uncharted game, um, you're not getting the full experience. It's really more of a story driven game. There, there is the, like the gameplay is good. Like it's fun, but it's fun. I think again, I associate it not with like 
the most groundbreaking experience in gaming, but like kind of like a Fast and the Furious is, right? Like you don't go because it's going to be the best movie you've ever seen. You go because it's fun and you go because there's crazy shit happening like well, crazy, and, like all the time. And that gets back to what I was saying. I didn't get an Uncharted because the actual gameplay didn't entice me the way that The Last of Us did. Like if you go through The Last of Us on hard mode, the way you have to interact with the environment, it's not... it it felt so much different to me than what the uncharted did because uncharted you, like you said it's story if driven. you do the exact same thing if you play uncharted on crushing it's the same experience as far as as far as having to deal with everything having to interact with your environment having to get through each situation and deal with it it really comes down to you should just go back and actually play them because you'll you might change your mind you might not you might go back and have the same verdict but i think if you actually played them through like even just mm. the first one or even just skip to the fourth one because i i prefer i thought the fourth one was fantastic um just play through one of them on crushing or whatever you know whatever you're trying to say play through it on that and then come back and tell me how, what you think because it is a different experience i get it I, I was just saying like i played halfway through the first i was just saying that it felt like different type of gameplay it seems like, uh, from what I've seen, Uncharted seems a little bit more arcadey in its gameplay mechanics. A I little can bit see more. That. I mean, it's it's more of a yeah. I can see that for sure. The shooting aspect of it is going to be pretty similar. I played through both of them. I played through Last of Us a couple times, and I played through all the Uncharted's, and yeah, so a pretty good idea. But I mean, they're not. Uncharted is going to be more arcadey. It's going to be more over the top. It's going to be more Tomb Raider-y, right? Mm -hmm. Especially the more recent term, Tomb Raiders. It's going to be a lot like that. Yeah. But, I mean, again, I could, you could that. just not enjoy that flavor of game. Like, maybe you just yeah. don't like Tomb Raider-esque games. And, and that's yeah, what I was saying. Like, the it. gameplay for it, it does feel it. different. Yeah, if you don't the, like... The, the theme, too. I'm not, yeah, I'm not if it's a theme thing. I think if you don't like Indiana Jonesy kind of games, then you're going to not like it. So you, there's no getting through that. <laughs> it's like, I don't like racing games, but you'll love Forza. I promise. Yeah. No, I don't like <laughs> yeah. racing games. No, just give it All a try. Right. No, then, now try Gran Turismo. It's great. Trust me. Gran, Gran, you remember, it's not like other racing games. It's like a sim. Yeah, exactly. It's more <laughs> racing than all racing games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a little different than saying you don't like racing games try mario kart yeah but uh, that's of, well i don't know yeah I was that would say, be that would be an exception i think mario kart's more of a party game than just well, that's game. what i was saying it's a little different saying hey for <laughs> racing fours are like racing yeah. hey here's mario it's like hey yeah. here's a sports game mario strikers <laughs> for, for what for what it's worth though i'd rather play any racing game than mario kart and i know that's an unpopular opinion but um, I like I've Mario Kart. I've never been a Mario Kart guy. I don't know what it is. I like all you the Mario play, you sub games. You should play Mod Nation Racers. It's Mod Nation Racers. Yeah, it's the same thing with longer loading times. No, <laughs> you don't that like sounds this. Great. You should play something just like it. It's more irritating. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. I I, I did good. enjoy that game more than I like. I love Mario Kart. I played all the time, but uh, we got into a tournament uh, of it at um 16 bit arcade. Were you there that night, Adam? No. They had a they had a tournament set up for it. Um, it was just free. Walk in, grab a beer, play Mario sixty four. Nice. The winner got like no, a twenty dollar gift card. Us sitting there playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater for a while. Fuck yes! And I remember another time when we were playing NFL Blitz, and this dude was crushing us, just killing it. Yeah, that was um, insane. That that guy was, but he was, was also kind of dirty. He would take out all your receivers as soon as the ball snapped. I mean, that's that's how you be good. That's that's how you get good at nfl blitz <laughs> yes that's how you end up wrecking every tourney that they have at the goddamn 16 bit his well, name was on the wall above the fucking cabinet yeah <laughs> well hopefully we get some people like uh like that at our tournament that we'll be hosting yeah. tomorrow yeah tomorrow, tomorrow we at will be hosting the tournament you guys know i'm sure you guys obviously know, I don't I'm know. Sure everyone that's watching knows i know I that you know. two are going to be playing in it after if i you're, pressure you're you. watching this on youtube or downloading it from a podcast app sorry you missed it but you can it was good it watch. yeah it was a great time <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. good. Yeah, it hasn't happened yet now uh, as of us saying this but now that you're listening to it it was great 
It was awesome. It was really good. You should, you should really go back and watch it. It was it was a good time. Adam hit a full court freestyle. Like he just hovered in the air. It was just amazing. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. win Everyone. the championship. So in win. case in case there's somebody watching that is uninitiated, can we can we go over this little tourney thing? Yeah, absolutely. So um, so we're putting on a tournament. There's a hundred dollar prize pool, Steam gift card. It's a West Coast tournament, which is pretty cool. Two v two. Two Rocket League, two, which is pretty neat. That. Not a, there's a good amount of those, but you know, we're we're gonna do another one. <laughs> yeah, a whatever. bunch of bunch of cool dudes signing up. A lot of people from uh, the community. We have obviously we have Adam and Eric are gonna are gonna play together, which is pretty yeah. cool. Super super stoked about that. You guys should go and uh, stomp on their faces. Yes, <laughs> yes. Magic Game just posted the do link it. in chat. So even though that, you know, for our audio only listeners, that doesn't get to help you at all. <laughs> Sorry again. But, but it was a great tournament. tournament. It was a fantastic yeah, tournament. Watch it. But, uh, Congratulations to the winners uh, who got those two fifty dollar Steam gift cards, one for each person on the team. Uh, congrats, guys. Hope you guys get some good games out of that. It was awesome to see you guys lose and come up through the losers bracket to actually uh, pull off the uh, bracket reset. Hey, that might not happen. <laughs> we don't know that yet. That was my way of letting people know it's double elimination. Oh, oh yeah, it's double. Elimination. Oh, guys, yeah. by the way, uh, important. <laughs> no, this is important. Um, the tournament, the tournament is double elimination. We got so, some cool. Uh, yeah, we got some cool teams in here. We have a bunch of people that are actually on the Rocket League team. Our Rocket League team consisting of BP yeah. Banner, DD, and Jake from State Farm. <laughs> Jake from State Farm. Yeah. Uh, but they're all playing separately, which is which is totally cool. We have. Un, uh, undercooked soggy lemons is Vanar and Double Vigo. Cool. Heck yes, that's, that's a very interesting team name. <laughs> but um, hopefully we this... have DMN with DD and Mike, which is pretty I'm looking cool. forward to Bubble Trouble. Bubble Trouble would be great, but I don't <laughs> think they're going to be making it. Oh no. unfortunately. Damn. Well, because Tom's also for the record, Tom's not here because Tom's still under the weather. Uh, but... Yeah, Tom is very sick. Hope we get better, Tom. Hope you're not dead. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't be dead if you are undo that please yes i'm looking forward to see those sick nasty slices <laughs> of uh, rs and shane that's gonna be that's gonna be a team <laughs> yeah. but hopefully this sign goes well training. yeah everyone yeah. sign up it's open up until an hour before it starts so up until 11 o'clock pacific standard time tomorrow you all can sign up if you don't have a teammate and you want to play jump in the discord make some noise you'll find someone there's lots yes. of people in this Discord that like to play Rocket League. It's a free tournament. And there are probably tournament. some people in here looking for a partner for this specific tournament. I'm pretty sure. There's three people looking yeah. for a partner, I think. But Well, two of those people need to just team up. But Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> um, if, but that if, still leaves another one. <laughs> hopefully this all goes well and we can actually start doing some uh, varied community-based tournaments. If this goes well, that'd be really that'd nice. That'd be cool. Yeah. Right. But, yeah, we'll definitely see how that goes get a competitive uh grand theft auto online heist tournament going <laughs> you could be the sickest um yes. did you guys competitive see dark souls do you guys see they're actually debating on doing competitive modes for the alt games for the what game for, for what? the alternative game modes why they're, oh, they're debating League? on doing um well, competitive modes for like snow day hoops drop oh, shot and rumble yeah the thing is is i think they've come to terms with the fact that when they come out with a new game mode like that everybody plays it for a couple of days and then they're like okay i'm gonna go back to the regular one oh uh, rumble yeah, still keeps gets... a population of a couple thousand though yeah but it's that's nothing compared to the however much the the regular game has and it certainly i don't think it would be worth their time necessarily to keep coming out with these new modes when people don't play them that much and i mean I there's, they... there's there's definitely two modes that get a lot of use and that's the hockey and hoops. Mm -hmm. There is the um, Rocket League hockey league that you can compete in, and that's been around forever since ever mm -hmm. since it dropped. And there's also a competitive hoops mode, uh, also. Yeah, but it would be nice if they made it into a uh, seasonal thing. Yes, yeah. rotate what ones. What kills me what though is I think what they're go ahead, Adam. Yeah, I think I'm what good. they're trying to do with it is since they've come to terms with the fact that they don't need to be coming out and making all these new game modes all the time because that wastes 
I don't want to say waste, but that that uses a lot of resources and time that they could be using to make the game better in other ways in the modes that people play more often. But if they just take the modes they already have now and maybe find a reason for people to come back to them and update them and, you know, add a competitive mode for hoops, people would start playing hoops a little more. And that would be a lot easier to do that than it would be to come up with some other game mode. And I think that's what they're trying to do. Honestly, I love drop shot. I think drop shot's my favorite of the alternative game modes. I, I agree. I think your drop shot was definitely the best. I enjoy it. I I think I'd rather yeah. play hoops. I think I like hoops better. Oh, really? Yeah. It's just so silly. I think the kickoffs like figuring out the once you can figure out the kickoffs, everything's all right. Yeah. But <laughs> I wouldn't mind seeing uh, a larger arena for hoops and yes. that would be cool. Three V three hoops. Yes. I think that would be really cool. I, yeah, I'm torn because I always liked the idea of hoops, but in practice, granted, part of this is my own fault. It's so much harder to do than I thought it would. Like I can aerial in the game, I can hit shots, no problem. But when it comes to okay, you have to get the ball to go down into the hole. (laughs) It's like fuck, this sucks. But yeah, I think that them adding that would be really, really good. I would be 100% down for them adding some competitive modes for those. Especially since yeah, well. they already have alternative leagues for it. Uh, <laughs> did you guys see um, the Doc disrespect when he came back? Oh, yeah. I was, was waiting impressive. on it. Hell yeah. Dude, that is nuts. He broke He the... got some insane numbers. Someone yeah, donated 5000 to him. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> After his first win, right? Yeah. Did he you just came back, his, won the his first, first game. game. Yeah, his first, his game, first back, game back. He, won. he had, what, 390,000 concurrent viewers? God. He, something, yeah, at some damn. point. Damn. He beat out Tyler, who just, what, had 380,000? It's mm-hmm. fucking absurd. Is that the most of all time? Yes, it is the record for the concurrent that's... for uh, for an individual. They've yeah, had crazy like E three, I think, had a million viewers or something like that. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, for I an mean, actual... some of the yeah, some like the over like not Overwatch the uh, Dota had. I mean, those those get crazy numbers. Mm-hmm. Counter Strike, some of the majors in Counter Strike get a pretty pretty serious number of people watching. But yeah, yeah this that is was like insane. One, one dude playing video games that's the way you really put it Ninety thousand people at the same time decided to watch him play video games <laughs> when you yeah but Did the you... thing is is what's crazy about it was when you put it into perspective uh, mm-hmm. of like arena capacity yeah, <laughs> yeah. like like the... it, it's at least most of the time like the capacity for the staples center over by uh, over in la is twenty one thousand. <laughs> the biggest like, open air stadium in North America is the big house in Michigan, and it's like 110,000 people can sit in it. Three yeah. of the largest football stadium in America <laughs> was watching this guy play video games. Just imagine if you used to build it up for that many people, and you just have that mm-hmm. little guy on a desk in the middle just playing, and everyone's watching him. That's exactly yeah. what I'm thinking. That's how I always think of it when I see, like, when I even see like a couple thousand, when I see a thousand people watching someone play a game. I'm always like, do you guys realize how many people right now are looking at you? That's a <laughs> lot of people. Yeah. I'm just That's... doing the view, not even like there's a lot of people, but of the idiocracy of it in a way of everyone just watching this dude just sitting at a desk. They're not seeing the game, just watching the dude sitting at the desk typing stuff. 300,000 people in this stadium. This guy's at the 50 yard line just typing away. <laughs> <laughs> But Dr. Yeah, Disrespect, that, though, is, is a very unique kind of streamer, too. He's definitely, he's built this character, and it's taken off. Very well. I mean, yeah. It's not just, like, somebody being themselves playing games. He's he's made, like, a whole thing around it, and it's really worked out. Very and now well. he's got an alter ego. The robot. Did you guys see yeah. that? Yeah, that I thought cool. that, I was, <laughs> he's I had was that before, that I think. Already, oh, he did? Yeah. 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 I, I thought that was new, it. too. He did kind of rebrand everything, though, because his uh, followers used to be called the Slick Daddy Club, which I always thought was funny. But uh, yeah, he cheated on his wife, so that's probably not a good idea to keep that the Slick Daddy Club. So (laughs) it's now the Champions Club. 
Yeah. Um, he's got all new graphics and stuff. Uh, his stream production quality is really good. He's got a lot of like transitions and I know it's kind of messy on the screen. There's a lot of pop-ups and stuff, but that's kind of part of it. And I think that a lot of that popping up, at least on this stream, was because everyone was resubbing. Everyone was dropping bits. Everyone was yep. donating. Yeah. Didn't they have like, they had a shitload, like, like, hundred, like tens of thousands of people subbing all at once? Like, they broke, yeah. he broke his Streamlabs. Broke but, Streamlabs, yeah. But to be fair, it's not very hard to break Streamlabs. <laughs> Sometimes Streamlabs is broken for us, and it's like, oh crap! I can't see that one person that did the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a, it's not exactly the most stable of platforms. <laughs> Good point. It that said, we love you, Steam Streamlabs. We love very helpful. Yes. Feel free to sponsor us. We would be very grateful. Yes, <laughs> brought to you by no, but. Um, yeah, I thought that was really cool. What him actually getting back? He's incorporating his wife into the streams now too. That's pretty cool. Oh, is As, he, I didn't meant, I didn't like, see that. Yeah, she's not on camera, but like the whole phone call thing between and stuff like that. A lot of people think oh. it's gonna. They're actually gonna try to do like a over the top arc. Okay. Mm. Which will be interesting if he tries to do some kind of story while playing games. He kind of does because cool. he like pretends to talk to his production crew sometimes and he's like fired a couple of those people and it's different names and stuff now yeah like, so like, like one like of the that. transitions will mess up and it'll be like alex god damn it this is the last time yeah <laughs> and stuff like that it's it's really funny also um one interesting thing i want to call before we get out to or off of him um he's not using any mods anymore yeah it's all automated he's doing all bot mods that's crazy yeah, um, I guess, um, yeah, if your mods are part of the issue, you got to get rid of your mods, so. I mean, but, yeah. Yeah, I, I, there was some story yep. behind that, but yeah, not dredge. Nintendo, for a nice soft segue. Um, <laughs> uh, more Nintendo news? We never uh, have that. Really Let's quick. Let's talk about Dark Souls. But the nice thing <laughs> is, it's I'm always. Thinking about playing, I'm thinking about playing Dark Souls. It's always different, yeah. though. It's I've never always played a Dark Souls game. You should play the new one. Oh yeah, I should play the new one when it gets remastered. The new old one. The new old one. I kind of just want to play three. Actually, I probably don't. I don't really want to play Dark Souls. That's fair. Anyway, Nintendo. Oh, I was just gonna say they're doing a reward system where Great. when you buy okay. digital games, <laughs> you get digital currency that you can actually put towards more games. Can I buy that digital currency with real money? Um, no. I don't believe you can Good. actually buy this. This is actually a, awesome. just, it's a reward. <laughs> it is a legitimate award system, reward system. It is okay. just what if there. I just want to buy my way up to another reward? You want to buy uh, your way up to buying a game? Probably do that. Yeah. I don't know. The way I understood it, that it's all going to be <laughs> encapsulated inside their system and you can't buy into it. I want to spend $100 for a $20 game. Uh, you can buy it five times. I don't want to do that. I just want to. I just want to get my rewards faster than my friends. Ah, okay. I now now we're to the root of the issue here. <laughs> I just, I just don't rewards. want to put in the effort that my friend spends. <laughs> ah, so it's like everyone else who plays Activision Blizzard games. Let's just buy everything in game. I don't want to actually be better. I just want to play better because I have better shit. Yeah. Um. Did you guys hear about their sales figures from last year? Probably pretty staggering. Oh, Something like uh, four billion, I'm guessing. Yes, sir. Damn wow, it, four billion dollars off in-game purchases last year. Jesus Christ, that is fucking nuts. Gotta That's make those a lot of goddamn money. Gotta look sharp, you know. This is coming from the company yeah. that has a patent on matchmaking to make you play with people who have sweet gear if you don't have anything. <laughs> but they don't use it. Nope. I, I never use it. Don't believe that bullshit at all. <laughs> Just imagine though, four billion dollars of people buying what in um Overwatch it's all cosmetics, right? Yep. Yep, pretty much. Well, I need to play, we need to play Overwatch again. We haven't played Overwatch in a while. It had Tom that was... free weekend. It had that free weekend, and then I ended up buying it and I haven't really played it since then. Oh, you actually <laughs> bought one. It? You got to yeah. call us out because like Overwatch is a game like I'll 100% of the time forget about unless someone yeah. says, hey, you want to play Overwatch? I'll be like, That's exactly yeah. the same thing. 
That's exactly my situation with that. Ooh. It's just because we don't have friends that play it like every day. We're just yeah. like we're just like guys that play the game sometimes. Like I used to play it with the bubbles all the time. We used to play it a lot. Mm-hmm. But now we don't because no one else plays it. So <laughs> Um, Dark Soul called something out real quick. I forgot to oh. bring this up. Uh, yep. PUBG's concurrent record or concurrent player record thing got broke. Uh, PUBG or uh, Fortnite, I guess, had more concurrent. It Dang. was more concurrent than PUBG. Yeah. Nice. Not a lot of people. People are pretty pissed about PUBG. Apparently, the new map everyone's really mad about. Played it. Yeah. I actually played PUBG the other day. Played around. It was all right. I like the new map. I have, I, I don't do play like a whole map. lot, but when I was on it, I enjoyed the shit out of that. I like it being a little more open. You have to be a little more thoughtful when you move. I mean, yeah. I suppose so. Either way, like it was just a lot of going, and then a, then I did some killing. I did some fights. Veggie Man <laughs> did way more killing than I did. Yeah. Um, but we shot some people. We got in some close calls. But in the end, it was just like. There was like more time traveling than fighting. Yeah. yeah Typical PUBG thing. Yeah. It is what it is. But, it, life. Yeah. but they're adding more buildings to that map, so that That's should be good. Cool. Maybe it'll be yeah. pretty maybe it'll be cool. I really I I'll keep going back. I'll keep playing it. It's gonna be fun. To me, part of that slow part adds to the game because it makes the high parts feel so much better. Yeah, yeah. It's mm. like starving yourself for so long and then food tastes so much better. It's not that the food is better, it's this starving beforehand that makes it taste better note to self starve before my cooking dude it works every time i'm telling you <laughs> all right sounds good. then i'll have uh, a i'll have a super skewed uh view on how well i cook <laughs> dude i am the best dude this tastes like shit yeah but it's better than dirt which i've been eating for the last four months <laughs> oh <laughs> Have you at least been spicing it up with some seasonings? Yeah, some oregano in that dirt. I thought maybe you'd sprinkle some clay on top. You can make you a nice soup if you add some water. Yeah, I have really nice spices. soup. Yeah, I have really nice spices, but like I don't have any ingredients. The soup of the day is mud. (laughs) My name is Mud. But... Anyway, I think it's about all we got for you guys this week. It's a quick week. Uh, No postcast game this week. Uh, We are prepping for the tournament tomorrow. So instead, jump on the stream noon Pacific Standard Time tomorrow and just check out what's going on in the tournament. We're going to be jumping in, uh, streaming uh, matches from every round. So it'll be fun. Good time, everyone. So And and just because there's no postcast game doesn't mean you can't jump in the Discord and play some games with some, some wonderful people. Just because we're not doing a postcast game, you guys can play your own postcast game. And we'll this be around. Always a lot Looking of people. Looking in the Discord right now, there's a couple people playing Rocket League. You could always join, or you could, you know, pop play in the Discord and start playing something else. Play some PUBG. Start, the, start the movement. Play some, yeah. Do it. <laughs> Do the but thing. Anyway, um, if you are watching us on Twitch and you missed last week, the week before, any of the weeks... You can go to YouTube, catch up on it, or see any of our other content there at 72 Pin Connector. If you're over there, come chill with us on Saturday nights, 6 p.m. East, or Pacific Standard Time, 9 Eastern, 72 Pin Connector on Twitch. I lost my train of thought. I'm mumbling. Um, <laughs> Twitter, tweet at us, at 72 PC Podcast. Tell us we suck. Tell us I need to get classes because I can't fucking talk. Um, you want to get some podcasts, you can go on YouTube or, um, oh my God, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, any of them. Or you can go to our website, 72pinconnector.com and get all your RSS feeds. And with that, Adam, do we have any other call outs? We do. And uh, this is actually funny. Uh, I'll go through the regular ones and I'll explain why that's funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> give me a second. Hey, Rune Killer subscribed earlier. Oh, sweet. For uh, another month. Thank you. V Dobby has also subscribed. Um, and Proto Tricks has resubscribed. Whoops. And here's why it's funny. We were just talking about how Streamlabs sucks sometimes. And I believe Magic Dave also subscribed, but it's not showing up on Streamlabs. <laughs> but I caught it. I caught it on the Twitch window. Yes, so. he absolutely sucks. <laughs> Streamlabs will let you off the hook this time, but uh, we're going to be keeping a close eye on you. Next time, we're burning that bridge, bitches. 
well, we can't really do much without it, so kind of obligated. Damn it. Uh, but we just write stuff. <laughs> we just write stuff down. That's Pencil good, and yeah. paper? That's barbaric. I'm gonna keep Not a notebook of all of our subscribers always. <laughs> got about ten lines. Yeah. Actually I've got post it notes. I'll just start putting them putting them up various places. <laughs> with dates. The guy with post it notes all over the, the monitor. The crazy guy. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, I think it's all we got for you, ladies and gentlemen. So until next week, game on. Bye, everybody. See ya.